drive like your people get, the better she's going to look. No, I don't buy that. It's obvious she's nuts. Look, a few people, maybe, but... No, I count four. She's preaching to them right now. By noon, she'll have four more. By tomorrow night, when those things come back, she'll have a congregation, and then we can start worrying about who she's going to sacrifice to make it all better. Hmm? You, Amanda, my little boy. That's right. You don't have much faith in humanity, do you? None whatsoever. I can't accept that. People are basically good, decent. Oh my God, David, we're a civilized society. Sure, as long as the machines are working and you can dial 911, but you take those things away, you throw people in the dark, you scare the shit out of them. No more rules. You'll see how primitive they get. They scare people badly enough. You can get them to do anything. They'll turn to whoever promises a solution. Yep. Or whatever. Ollie, please, back me up here. I wish I could. As a species, we're fundamentally insane. But more than two of us in a room, we pick sides and start dreaming up reasons to kill one another. Why do you think we invented politics and religion? Oh, Jesus, that's just wrong. Look, nobody has to decide anything now, okay? First things first. Shalom, Yashram. I'm going to start out by giving an infinite honors to my Heavenly Father, my Great King, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Bahashim, Hara, Kakadash, double honors to our apostles and other bishops of Great Millstone, and salutation to my fellow laborers in the Mashiach, Yahweh, pushing the blood true cross the four winds. Shalom, one of you brothers. Now, I bought out that clip because that's soon to be a reality here in America. You heard this guy say, as a, a society, they are uh, fundamentally insane, okay? And you heard the other guy say, as long as the machine is working and 911 is working, people are civilized. He said, you take away those so-called comforts and you're going to see everybody turn into animals, okay? And that's what we've been prophesying through the spirit and power of Yahweh HaBashim HaVashah. Our hell is about to break loose in America. And the, pe the people that you see every day that you think are civilized, they're going to turn into zombies. They're going to turn into brute beasts, all right? They're going to turn into cannibals. They're going to be, they're going to be bloody men. Bloody women, they're going to do things that you never thought that they would do, all right? Because what's going to keep the men of the Lord stabilized is wisdom. But these people don't have wisdom. And we're going to show what happens to people that don't have wisdom. They are they they thrive off of instinct, no different than a brute beast, okay? And that was a beautiful clip of how society is going to end up. These so-called civilized people in the First world country are going to regurgitate into uh, cavemen and cave women, okay? Doing all type of unseemly things to survive. No different than a leopard, a lion, tiger, or bear in the jungle or a forest, okay? So I'm going to start off in uh, Psalms, okay? 59. And King David found himself in a predicament where everybody was dealing with him as an adversary and they they were dealing with him. He was like a sheep and he had a bunch of wolves and and uh, animalistic people trying to kill him, okay? Saul and, and the whole Israelite army, all right? And the people of Israel, because he was a fugitive. The same thing that's going to happen to us, okay? This is uh, Psalms 59. To the chief musician, Altachich, Mitchum of Dawada, when Saul sent and they watched the house to kill him. All right? They was trying to kill King David like they're going to try to kill the servants of Yahweh HaBashim HaOshah. Deliver me from mine enemies. All right? Now, our enemies are going to are uncivilized. They don't have the spirit of Yahweh HaBashim HaOshah, so they are nothing more than beasts. Okay? Oh, my power, defend me from them that rise up against me. Okay? Your sister, your brother. The Lord say in Matthew the 10th chapter, he came to bring variance between families. All right, your so-called loved ones will offer you up when all of their basic necessities are taken away, all their resources are taken away, and they're without. They, they, For lack of bread, they're going to spoil whoever and do whatever it takes to survive. And you're going to see that the love of the world is nothing. It's not love, all right? The only way you can love is you keep these commandments. Without the commandments, you don't have love. You have an emotion. You just have an emotion, how you feel uh, about a person at a certain time and emotions change like the weather, but love doesn't because the commandments would be here forever. Okay. So these people can't love. Okay. 
Once their comforts are taken away, you're going to see they have no love for their children, their mothers, their fathers, or their sisters. They're going to devour one another. You heard what the guy say. As long as the machines are working, all right, and the grid is up, yeah, people are going to be civilized. But what happens when, it take, when it's taken down? Okay? They're going, to, they're going to devour one another. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. And two-thirds of our people are workers of iniquity, and the heathens are workers of iniquity. All right. They are void of the law. They may void the law, statutes and commandments of Yahweh by Shema All right. And the, the law is what civilizes us. OK. And save me from bloody men. All right. All these people you see in society that you think are civilized people, they are bloody men. They just need something to, uh, to nudge them. All right. Take away their resources. Take away, knock off the grid. All right. Take away their jobs. Take away their, their, their uh, way for them to make money. You will see. And all of them are bloody men. For lo, they wait and they lie and wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Yahweh. They run and prepare themselves without my without my fault. Awake and help me and behold. And that's what we're doing right now. We see this uh, turbulent time coming and we're begging the Lord to have mercy on us. That's what Ezra saw. And he say, uh, Oh, so I swallowed down all my soul, knowledge and wisdom. All right. He said, war is we, war is me. Who shall deliver me in that day? Okay. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake and help me and behold. Thou therefore, O Yahweh, power of hosts, the power of Yasharala, awake to visit all the heathen and be not merciful to any trans wicked, wick, any wicked transgressors. And the Lord, what he's going to do, the mercy that he's not going to show to them, he's going to let them devour one another. Okay? They're going to devour one another. We're going to live to see it. I don't want to write desire. We're in that righteous number. These Americans are going to devour one another. Okay? Women are going to kill their children and eat them. Men are going to kill their wives and eat them. All right? You're going to have... Demonic hordes of men banding together, just spoiling anybody in their path. Okay? These are the times we're coming in. And that that little clip, that little movie clip is, 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 is prepping people look at these movies for entertainment. When we look at these movies, we have on spiritual binoculars. All right? We have on spiritual bifocus. We we apply the, apply the things that they say to what's going to come to pass, to prophecy. Everything we do, we funnel it through prophecy. All right? This is Psalm 73 and 22. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. And the reason he said he was foolish, he, he wasn't living according to the law. He didn't have wisdom. And when you don't have wisdom and you're void of the law, you're, you're nothing more than a beast. These people are beasts. What do beasts do? Let one leopard go into another leopard's uh, dominion, territory. They kill one each other. They fight to the death. Let one lion see a bunch of leopard cubs. He don't care that they cubs. He go kill them and eat them. Let one lion go into another lion's territory. After he devours that lion and, and takes over, he goes and kills the, the, the uh, lion that he's took over uh, offspring. All right? These people are beasts, man. All right? The Lord likens people void of the law, void of the commandments, void of the spirit. He likens them to beasts. And beasts devour one another. They kill one another. They are merciless to one another. All right, turn on the Discovery Channel. See how they get down. See how they rock out. If a leopard goes into when a when a lioness go out to go out to hunt, all right, and a leopard walks up on a bunch of lion cubs, the leopard's gonna kill those lion cubs. All right, they are merciless to one another. Okay, and this is what's about to happen when this infrastructure falls, man. We laugh about it because this has to happen, man. These people wicked in this society, man. There's no fear of the Lord in this place. So we know that judgment draweth not. It's here. It's basically here. All right. This is the book of James, chapter four, verse one. From whence come wars and fightings among you, wherever you don't have the spirit of the Lord. All right. Wherever the Holy Spirit isn't dwelling there, you're going to have tumults. All right. You will have bickerings, backbitings, killings, murders. OK. Came they not hence? Even of your lust that war in your memory. See, the spirit make us put our lust in the subjection. What Paul say in 1 Corinthians 9 chapter, we beat our body and put it in the suggestion through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema uh, It's written in 2 Corinthians, what that is, the 12th chapter, it say his strength is made perfect in our weakness. All right, so we glory in our formities, 
so the power of Yahweh could rest upon us. So we beat this wicked, vile flesh and that beast like persona that we are naturally born with through the spirit. But if you don't have the spirit, this is what you're going to do. You lust and you have not and you kill. This is what these people are going to do. They're going to be hungry. They're not going to have not and they're going to kill for it. OK. These are divine laws, man. All right. These are universal laws. All right. This is what people that are outside of the temple. This is how they get down and desire to have and cannot attain. You fight in war. Yet you have not because you act not. You're not dealing with Yahweh Bashim al OK. So when you don't deal with Yahweh Bashim al you're not civilized. When you read uh, Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, it say that this law is what made us put us above the level. Let me let me get it. All right. This is what civilizes us. It might be Deuteronomy 7. One of them tells you what happens with this law does for us. Uh, here we go. It's 7. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art a holy people unto the law of thy power. That means we're set apart. The Lord separate us from the other nations. And Yahweh thy power have chosen me to be a special people unto himself above all people that are on the face of the earth. Now let's see what's the difference between us and them. Yahweh did did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. You were fewest of all, because because but because Yahweh loved you, and because he he would keep oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, have the Lord brought you out of a out with a mighty hand and redeem you out of the house of bondmen in the hand of Pharaoh. All right. Now, therefore that the Lord, thy power, he is the power, the faithful power, which keepeth covenant and mercy and with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So these commandments and this blessed law, that covenant he made with us is what di uh, differentiates us from the other nation. This is what made us uh, civilized. Okay. Let me see. Uh, here we go. Deuteronomy 4 and 7. This is another one to back it up. For what nation there is so great, all right? The Lord is about to differentiate us from us and them, who have Yahweh so not unto them. As, Yah as Yahweh, our power is in all things, we call upon him. And what nation is so great that they have the statues, the judgments, so righteous is all his law, which I have said before this day. This day. All right. This is why we're not going to resort to cannibalism when we when we don't have uh, when we lack bread. This is not why this is why we're not going to kill our children when we get hungry, when we go days and we don't have water and drink. We're going to we're going to have faith that the Lord will make water come out of a rock. We're going to have the faith that the Lord is going to send angels down and feed us manna from heaven, that he's going to lift up that standard. OK. That's what separates us from these um uh, people that rock off of a hundred percent instinct yes <laughs> instinct animals do things instinctively all right vile beasts rock off of instinct they are not intelligent all right a fucking a fucking lion smell is mom and heat and fucker all right that, that, that's what brute beasts do OK, it'll have sex with his sister. All right. It'll, it'll bite his mama's ear off to get some meat. OK. That's what brute beasts look at them. Look what they do when they get around to kill. They fight each other. You ever heard of the term hungry lions? They fight each other for those for that for that carcass. All right. That's what these people are about to do. This is what they're about to do. And this is why they're going to do it. All right. This is a. Uh, well, hold up. I want the one. I'm going to bring out the one in Sirach first. Because I was about to bring out the other one. I'm going to bring out the one. This is why they're going to do it. Because they have the father of the devil. This is why our people are going to do it. All right. This is Sirach 10. And. No, that's 17. It's lucky. This is Sirach 10. Okay. And two, as the judge of the people is himself, all right, as the so-called white man is, he's a, uh, uh, he's void of law. Uh, second Corinthians, second Thessalonians, the second chapter, call him the, the son of perdition. All right. The man of lawlessness. All right. 
He's the man of lawlessness. OK, we read in another translation. All right. So he's made void the law. So he has no order. All right. So if he's the king, as he's the judge. All right. As the judge of the people is himself. So are his officers. All right. So are the people that are under him. The people are going to be bloody men just like him. They're going to be bloodthirsty just like him. They're going to deal with controversy just like him. Look how the so-called white man, what he's done since he's been in power. He's going around the earth, wielding his sword, killing innocent people and robbing them and spoiling them for their resources. That's the same thing these Americans are going to do when they get uh, when they need replenishing, when they need resources, they're going to do as their king does. OK. And what man a ruler of the city is, such are they that dwell therein. And the so-called white man is a bloody man. So all of these Americans, when they get in bad case, they're going to resort to being bloody men and women. <laughs> all right. And let's see what the Lord called this nigga. All right. This is the prayer of Azariah. All right. Chapter one. Verse nine. And it's written. And thou delivered us into the hands of lawless en enemies. See, this so-called white man don't have no discretion. He's void of the law of Yahweh Bashim Shah. He's cast it away. When you go to these Christian churches, they say the law of Moses is done away with. But when you go to the book of Galatians, the third chapter, they say the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Yahweh Shai. The law told us the difference between holy and unholy and clean and unclean. So when you make void the law, you just a profane nigga. OK, and that's what the so-called white man has done. All right, the Lord, they say the Lord has delivered us into the hand of lawless enemies. They have no discretion, no honor, no morals. All right. Most hateful forsakers of the most high. All right. These people in America do not know the most high. All right. Their understanding of the law on um, what that is, Isaiah, uh, is Isaiah, the 26th chapter. All right. Their, their understanding of the Lord is taught by the precepts of men. All right. And this is the man that, that taught us of the most high, a, a person that hates the most high. And until an unjust king, this so-called white man gave us seminary doctrine. And he's an unjust king and the most wicked in all the world. All right. So when this guy is the one that's teaching you the Bible, and you go into his churches learning from him. He's teaching you how to be an unjust. and He's teaching you how to be lawless. All right. And he's going to teach you to do things the way he do things. And what he does, look what he did. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He didn't forgive those people. All right. Like what he tell the Negroes here in America to do. Forgive us for what we did, you niggas in slavery. Forget what we did you during the time. For, forgive us for what we did you during the time of Jim Crow. All right. March, nigga. And forgive us. Let us pour hot coffee on you. Let us do all these things. But when somebody did something against them. All right. They went and bombed that bitch. They ain't practice what they preach. They the joy the hypocrite is for but a moment. They ain't they didn't do what they they teach our people over here in America to do. They went to war. When 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 on 9 11, when them, we know it was inside job, but under the pretenses of what they say, all right, from their point of view, their narration, they didn't go forgive their enemies. They went and blew shit up. They went in Afghan and Iraq blowing shit up, man. Okay? Killing innocent people. This is what they do. And, and the people are gonna follow suit. They're gonna do what they see. This lawless piece of shit do, okay? Because like the guy said on that clip, the machines are going to stop working. You want to call 911 and get a busy tone. That day is here. It might, it, it, hey, and it just might be here in, in, uh, in 24, 2024. This, this, this may as well be the year. We think it is. Uh, we, as we speak as men, Lord willing, all right? I don't want to rot the side, all right? Everything that guy said on that clip, this just may as well be the year where you're going to see people at their worst. <laughs> you're going to see them. They're going to be at their worst. Okay? And this is why. This is uh, Second Ezra's 15 and 19. A man should have no pity on his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. So your next door neighbor, hey, well, how you doing, Mr. Johnson? Like my next door neighbor um, at my mother's house, I... I been out of my mother's house about, I say, I left at 19. I came back around 25 and I stayed from 25, four more years to 29. I've been gone since I'm 29. I'm 42. 
All right. And all my life, she's had the same neighbors. They cool. They like family. My mother's next door neighbors are family. Now, my neighbors over here, they cool. But the neighborhood I grew up in as a child, those are the same people. They still alive. All right. They're in the 80s and they're good people. I grew up with their sons. and shit. So just imagine, OK, they come to my mother's house and have no pity on all the times they came to barbecues and birthdays. And like it was times. Uh, my, my mama come from work and she had been forgot. She locked the door. My dad locked the door. I go to their house until my parents got home. They treated us like family. They uh, they'll be barbecuing. They'll be like, "Hey, uh, you know, my government name, come over. You get a plate." Now just imagine one day you come out there. They shooting at you. They kicking in your door, trying to drag you out and go, coming to kill you for canned goods and bottle waters. Oh yes, yes. They, they, pe- these Americans don't know what it is to go through hard times, tough times. So they are going to resort to what they see the so-called white man do and be bloody, spoil, kick in doors, rob and murder. All right. And then the Lord is going to mingle that perverse spirit here. So, you know, they're going to have demons on them anyway. All right. Second is 15 and 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for their great tribulation. You see, these prophecies are speaking, man. We about to see this shit, man. That's why we got to be getting built up on our, our most holy faith, man. Like I'm going through some shit right now with some health ailments and I'm, I done put myself on a, well, the brother gave me the literature on uh, the water, Lord, for my um, beloved brother, uh, what I did to get on a plant-based diet, you know, and I lost a lot of weight. But I'm still going through it. But it's no time to be in no war with me, Spirit. We go from glory to glory. We got to go through this shit, man. We can't just sit here and talk about we hurting, we hurting. And then we at the finish line and shit about to hit the fan. All right? The Lord's strength is made perfect in our weaknesses, man. And we got to have faith that he's going to do everything he says he's going to do. All right? We can't be talking about we sick and downtrodden and shit about to hit the fan. Nah, man. What the Lord told him, your faith have made you whole. What he told Peter when Peter walked on that water, he said, why did you doubt? <laughs> he walked. He said, why did you doubt? So you got to look at that scripture and look at that dynamic. All right, I can't doubt. The Lord going to heal me. I can't doubt. No matter how bad this pain feel, the Lord going to heal me. You know, no doubt. He that the doubt of them is damned. OK. And you know, these prophecies are coming to pass. You can see them materializing right now, man. All right. This is about that clip is about to be reality for all Americans, good and bad. All right. Rich and poor. All right. Righteous and wicked. (laughs) Everybody about to go through this tribulation, whether your deeds be good or bad. Okay. You either going to have a white stone or a black stone. All right. This is Isaiah 19 and 2. I'm going to leave off on this one. All right, and this is what these Americans are going to do because it's written a fourth time. These prophecies are coming to pass. The, the Most High watches over his word to perform it. Isaiah 19 and 2, and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians and to change that, I will set the Americans against the Americans. I'm going to cut off their machines. I'm going to shut down their banking system. I'm going to make their economy crash. All right, I'm going to hyperinflate the prices for food, water, and raiment. Gas is going to go up to... Uh, $150 a gallon. The average American can't afford that. So what are they going to do? They're going to come to the streets and for lack of bread, they're going to kill one another and spoil one another. And they shall fight everyone against his brother, every American against another American and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. Kingdom. All right. This is what's about to happen. That clip is about to be a soon reality for these Americans. That's why we have to come to the throne of grace boldly, beg your how about Shema Bashah for mercy, get built on our most holy faith, and prepare for these turbulent times. So with that, I'm going to get infinite honest my Heavenly Father, my great King, your how about Shema Bashah by Shem Harakakadash, double honest to elder apostles and elder bishops of great millstone, and salutation to my fellow labors in the Mashach, Yahweh Shah, Kwam Yasharala, Ababa Ba.